thing I want to show in this uh, video is titration calculation. So I'm going to go through this kind of quickly. It's just a way of neutralizing. Titrations are a way of neutralizing a reaction. And then we can um, find out information about either volume or molarity of one of the, either the acid or base. And we use an indicator in the process. So essentially, we know that an acid plus a base is always going to yield a salt. And that's just a generic term for ionic compound plus water. And here's an example. Um, you have this written down on your sheet that you know that your hydrogen would go with your hydroxide. There's your water. I'm going to write it as HOH, same thing as H2O. And then we know that what we have left is our lithium and our sulfate. So plus one, minus two. So that's why it's written that way. And then we have to balance it. So we would throw a two and a two in there. Um, the reason in a neutralization reaction, basically what happens is we're assuming that all of your hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions would be used up so or paired up. So you would expect, in that case, to get a resulting pH of 7. Everything would be neutral. But that's not always going to be the case. And we're going to, we'll talk more about this with salt hydrolysis. But um, here you can see that sometimes you can have leftover hydrogen ions, in which case it ends up being more acidic. Or you might have leftover hydroxide. How do I do this? Do this like that. You might have leftover hydroxide ions, in which case it would be more basic. So it doesn't always neutralize it completely and get a pH of 7. So um, this is just going through the process of what we would do with titrations. Um, you start, you know how much you add to the solution. Let's go through and get some definitions here. A standard solution is just going to be a solution with a known concentration. A standard solid is going to be a solid with a known mass. Your end point is going to be the point at which an indicator changes colors. And um, the equivalence point is going to be when you have your concentrations of both your hydrogen ions and your hydroxide ions are going to be the same. So if you had, let's say we've got pH versus volume. And what's going to happen is you're going to add that volume. pH is going to slowly, slowly change. Then it's going to happen pretty dramatically, and then slowly change again. It's this point right in here, which is considered that equivalence point. And notice it's just over a small little amount of volume that you get that big change when you would also see that indicator change as well. Um, let's fill these in real quickly. So this is going to be red, blue, yellow, green. You could always look this type of information up. Blue, colorless. Phenolphthalein is one that we're going to work with. Uh, it's colorless in basic solutions. and I'm sorry, in acidic solutions. And then it turns a really bold type fuchsia pink in acids. Okay, now let's go ahead and do some calculations. Here are our rules. I'll let you go through those and read through those. I'll, I'll talk about them as I work through the problem. So the first thing we want to do is set up our reaction. And here we're told that we have sodium hydroxide plus this big, evil, nasty acid of some sort. So let's... It is a neutralization, or a, it, it's a double replacement reaction. What we know is going to happen is that you are, um, you're going to get a salt formed, which is going to be your sodium. That's your cation. And then the rest of this stuff is going to be your anion. And then, of course, we get water. Oops. 
Um, again, I wrote it as HOH. I don't mind if my students do it that way because that helps with balancing. So make sure your teacher uh, lets you do that. But we're going to go through and make sure it's balanced. Everything's plus one, minus one, so all is good. Then we can write down information below it that it gives us in the problem. Here we know we start with 32.14 milliliters. And we are looking for the concentration. And we know that we're also starting with 2.9362 grams of our acid. So whenever you're given the grams of a compound, you know that you can take that and um, I'm just going to call it that right now. We know that we can take that and calculate the uh, moles of that. So quickly I add that up in my head and I get that many grams per mole so now, by doing that, I get 0 0.01438 moles, roughly, of our HKC. So we've just looked at what we know the most about. This is what we know the most about, because we can easily calculate moles from that. So I, step one was to write a balanced equation. Step two is to calculate the moles from the substance that you know the most about. So I've just done that. Now, I want to convert from moles of one thing, what I know the most about, to moles of the other thing. This is getting pretty sloppy. And remember, the way you would do that is you would look up in your balanced equation. You've got one of these and one of these. You're looking at your mole ratio. So I want to find out information about my base. So this should just be reminding you of stoichiometry. It's really nothing different than that. So you just have to make sure that you start with your balanced equation. I know that I'm getting rid of the moles of my acid and going to the moles of my base. So that's step three, is trying to determine moles of the unknown. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So again, it's going to be that same value. And um, now all I have to do, in this case, I'm looking for molarity. So I know that molarity is equal to moles over liters. And um, you'll notice that we have milliliters that are given to us in our problem. So we can easily say that that's going to be equal to our moles divided by our liters of 0 0.03214. And you get 0 0.4473 molar sodium hydroxide is needed to neutralize this. Um, it's worth noting that we had four sig figs here and four sig figs in our final answer. Okay, next one. The last one. Um, here we're starting our reaction school simple. We're going to start with KOH and phosphoric acid. So think about what your reaction is going to be. You're going to get your salt, which is potassium phosphate, and water. Now the reason I write my water like that is because now it's pretty easy for me to look and say, OK, I've got three potassiums here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 3 here. That gives me 3 hydroxides. So I'm going to put a 3 here for my hydroxides, which gives me 3 hydrogens. All's good. I've got 3 hydrogens there. And my phosphates look good. So I can keep my polyatomic ions intact. So now I just jot down information that I'm given in the problem. And I am looking for molarity of my... Uh, my acid. I have just done step one. So step one is balanced chemical equation. Step number two is to find out, to calculate the number of moles of the given, of what you know the most about, which happens to be my base, my potassium hydroxide. So I am going to set this up by saying, okay, I've got liters here in this case, and I've got moles per liter. So should I start with one unit or two units? And I always start with the one unit. This is just taking you back to dimensional analysis and stoichiometry. So I'm going to start with my one unit in liters. I'm going to do this as one big one. I know that I don't want it as liters. I want it as moles. 
So I'm still on my second step. I'm going to convert to moles of my potassium hydroxide. So I know that I've got 0 0.396 moles for every one liter of my potassium hydroxide. Well, I really don't care about the moles of potassium hydroxide. I am more interested in converting to the moles of my unknown, my acid. So now I look at my balanced equation and I see I have one mole of my acid to every three moles of my base. So now I've got it as moles of, base of my acid. What I want to do is I want to calculate the molarity. So remember molarity equals moles over liters. Right now, if I were to stop right here, I'd have my answer as moles. So all I need to do is divide by liters, which is going to be 0 0.025 liters, because that doesn't cancel and that doesn't cancel. I have moles over liters, so that must be how I set it up. And we get our final answer, a 0 0.136 molar phosphoric acid. So that is a titration equation. Shouldn't be too tough. It should remind you of uh, dimensional analysis and stoichiometry.